So I know who the people are, and I'm just following them. Right? And you can see that within half a year, these people are disappearing fast. You go from 100% of them being unemployed down to 60. Right? So within the first six months, there's a lot of people leaving unemployment. That's why people often get the impression that you know, you're in and out. But notice, by about, say, the two-year mark, I go and I ask all these people, are they on unemployment? I got 40%. And then I come three and a half years later, and it may not be the same 40%, but it's the same 100 at the beginning. And you can see how flat it is. Right? How flat it is. And that's just saying that once people are on, there may, may be a lot of coming and going at the beginning of the period, but it's very long duration. Disability is worse. See the one at the top? I take 100 people in on disability. The golden rule in disability is very... Disability is not good. It's not good. You leave basically in two ways. You die. Not good. Or you retire. That is, you stay there all the way to retirement. And you can see that in that picture, see? Seven and a half years later, we've, or, the number of people who enter disability, 80% of them are still coming into on to disability. About 5% have died, the rest, you know, they go on to an H mission. So it's a long duration game. So that means it's going to be hard to make fast progress. Now, this is, I, I really got very excited about this myself, and, and I think this is something that that I can contribute, and I did contribute to the debate, that the micro guys can't contribute that easily. Right? If you're a micro guy, like, like when you listen to Paul, Paul's talking about programs, and he, he mentioned a little bit about the borders. It turns out that the borders are really important. That is, in Australia we have many income support programs designed for specific groups. But people, Either they fall in more than one or two categories, or their circumstances change. So they move around. So one of the things you have to know is when you, if you reform program A, you've got to know there's B, C and D and E out there. And so the interesting thing is, if you squeeze A, are they all going to jump to B? No? Or if you squeeze A, how many jump to B? Now, I'll give you an example of uh, that uh, later on, and you'll see how dramatic that can be. Now, let's just, I think the next picture might show that. What's that? Oh. Oh, okay. This will show that, all right? Didn't realise I'd done this. This is pretty fancy. Somebody else must have done it for me. Okay, so these are, I take married men on disability. They're between 45 and 54. Okay, so I take the 45 to 54 men on disability, but you've got to be married. And I start in 1995. Now, we made a major decision in 1995, which is really very interesting. Before 1995, if the male was, became disabled and he was married, he could go down to Centrelink and say, I'm disabled. They say, here's your money. He said, oh, by the way, I'm married. Oh, here's some more money. <laughs> right? That is, they gave you money for you and your wife. Now, if you're lucky, your wife's 22-year-old with a degree and fit as can be, doesn't matter, she gets the money. Don't have to do anything. She gets the money because you're disabled. Okay? So then we changed that. And we said, well, all right, if she wants money, send her down. Got to get her own money. Right. That is, if she's disabled, then we'll pay her, or if she's unemployed, we'll pay her. But she's got to get her own money. And then the disability group said, but this is not fair. So the government said, oh, well, OK, OK, we'll grandfather it. That is, for all the women who are on, they can stay on. Okay. So the next day, nothing sort of changes. But you can see with this line that the number of wives of the disabled who were getting money because their husband was disabled, used to be about 90%. Right? And then as time goes by, 
we won't let any new wives on. They've got to get their own money. And so by the time we get to the end of the period, we're down to about 15. Now that says two things. One, it says by closing the gate and grandfathering, you drag the process out. And you can drag it out a long way. So for this group of men, I mean, 25, 20, almost 20 years later, there's still some wives there. So what happened to all these other wives who no longer get the, uh, disability? Well, some of them, we, the government introduced a partner allowance. So we introduced another program whereby they could, some of them could squeeze over, provided they were over, born before 55, 1955, and provided they not worked a lot. So some of them squeezed out into that program. Some of them squeezed out under another program. Some of them squeezed out and became carers. Some of them squeezed out and became disabled. Some of them squeezed out and became unemployed. And so by the end of the day, guess what? <laughs> if the men were disabled, their wives were being paid. Again, it just was not under the old program. It was like, well, now, so if you are responsible for this policy, you should focus on the bottom line. Right? <laughs> if, you're, if you have the big numbers like me, you focus on the top line. So that's really important. People will jump around. Okay? And they'll jump around partly if you squeeze them. The other reason they'll jump around, which is becoming more of a problem at home, is that the rewards for being on programs have changed. Much better to be disabled. If you had a choice, didn't matter much 20 years ago, now it's much better to be disabled if you had a choice compared to being unemployed. Because if you're unemployed, all sorts of bad things happen to you. I mean, they hassle you, they make you come in, you've got to apply for a job. I mean, it's not like the good old days. I mean, it really is tough. Whereas if you're disabled, they're not doing anything to you. Furthermore, in the good old days, whether you were disabled or unemployed, they paid you the same amount of money. And now what we've done is we've indexed these two payments differently. So the unemployed were indexing on the CPI. So their benefits have been kept fixed in real terms. So as the community gets richer, they don't get richer. But for the disabled, we index on average weekly earnings. So as the community gets richer, they share it. So there are financial gaps between the groups. So that's a big point to remember. There's substitution between programs. And you need to know how much. And it will vary by program and program and person and person. Uh, I've talked about that. I'll show you this one. This, I, I really like this a lot. Remember I told you for if if you're a partner of a disabled person, uh, then uh, you could still, uh, and you could still get, or, or the partner of a married, an unemployed man, you could still get benefits provided you satisfied some of these grandfather conditions. Right? That is provided you were born before 1955 and provided you hadn't had a lot of labour market experience. And so these are the total inflows of married women 45 to 64. Those blue inflows, so it's say 5,000 a month, right? Inflows into the income support system. The blue lines up the top are the inflows of married women in this age group because of their husband's qualifications. Right? They're coming in because their husband has got unemployed or because their husband is a disabled person. Right? And then they have these subcategories, you know, the women are then, they've got to be born between 55 and so on. So in 2003, we just said, the grandfathering is now over, that's it. You cannot enter this program anymore. Now when the government says you cannot enter the program anymore, you can see by and large they got it, what they said when. You see the blue lines just disappear. 